Okay, welcome to OGHQ. I've been waiting to do this video for a day that I had everything beautiful and perfect and I wanted to have an open house and all of that. Well, clearly that's not gonna happen. Uh, so I wanna take you through the facility. This place is likely gonna change here really soon. Uh, so I wanna take you through kind of how it's set up, how we operate, all the things that are in here and then all, I guess, my future plans as we kind of walk through. So if you were to come to HQ, you would walk in the front door here that we've now turned into, if you've seen in the past, we had our media guys in here. Well, now it's become our packing stations, our excess packing stations here. July, uh, we're doing a lot more prep work for the fall season. We just got through the spring, uh, which had, we had thousands and thousands of orders we were behind. Uh, we are now shipping almost within the hour. Uh, and so we have these overflow packing stations for our extra packers. Uh, we also have, uh, we use these uh, Better Pack uh, tape machines um, to do packing. For the first, you know, three and a half years of this business, uh, we've done, you know, 100,000 orders with one machine. Well, now we have several of them. In here is the uh, podcast studio uh, slash Chris's office. This used to be my office. You'll see the general theme here. I get an office and a desk, and then I have to give it to the next person. Uh, but in here is where we do our live stream podcast. Uh, this is also where Chris does all the accounting, all of the, uh, you know, sort of the negotiation with vendors and, and spreadsheeting of all of our stuff. Right now he's working on, uh, what are you doing, inventory? Building kits for the new Cox hose reels. Mm, working on, we have new uh, different colors of Cox hose reels coming. Uh, and so he's working, Chris has many, many hats where he does, um, you know, inventory, the digital side of inventory management, um, creating, you know, uh, products, um, um, accounting, HR, uh, hiring, firing, all that kind of stuff. So uh, Chris does all of that. In here, you can hear acoustically, it's very different than the rest of the building. Uh, we have GIK acoustics uh, panels on here, not particularly strategically placed, more just put on all the walls so that it sounds a little bit more acoustically accurate or less uh, echoey because this is only a eight foot ceiling in this in this little office here but uh, likely what will happen here as we move out of this building in the future is that um, Chris will probably go up to our new building which we'll talk a little bit about as we kind of uh, as we work through this this facility uh, but I did want to capture day in the life, real time, exactly how we do things on a Wednesday afternoon with no cleanup. Um, I walk in here and start yelling at Chris for having crap on the desk and in the corners, but uh, uh, this is a real functioning facility with way too many people in a tiny little spot. Uh, we use, uh, this is an iMac Pro that we, that we use to uh, run our live streams, uh, and, uh, and then I have a 43-inch monitor on the wall as well. Uh, the, the, the idea was that I would do a lot of... Um, live streaming and podcasts and stuff in this room, well, it's become a functional office to this point. So out here, uh, we now have 19 people that work here in a, in a 3,800 or 3,600 square foot building. Uh, and so the way we've reset up, you have, probably haven't seen this if you've been following along for years, uh, we used to have this, the big list of table that's over here, which where we did assembly, and we had two little packing tables. My mom started packing at her house uh, in Pennsylvania using a card table. Uh, now we have these, we use these, these are actually uplift, commercial framed uplift desks uh, that uh, go up to roughly 60 inches in height. Uh, and so they'll adjust depending on the size of the box. They actually function really well for doing this kind of packaging. Uh, and then we just here recently um, put a bit, you know, the better pack, uh, better pack 555 is at each workstation. So Lewis is a new, uh, new uh, packer slash learning all the product. The concept here is that when people come in to OG, they either pick or pack so that you can learn the product uh, and then you know, we kind of figure out where people fit over, over time. Most of our assembly goes on over here. Um, we're working on uh, putting together some uh, kits of uh, six, six, point, six foot, six inch pipes. Uh, the reason why we cut the piping down is so we can ship it economically. Otherwise it costs you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars to ship. And we also make uh, three inch versions. Prevost doesn't cut this for us. And so we do quite a bit of assembly and construction in this tiny little spot here uh, where we, um, you know, where we put together packages of things. This would be the, for the piping package for the pressure washer system, which we cut down to three foot three inches. Uh, or, or the um, you know, people who are doing you know, compressed air lines in their garage, where they can buy this and have we ship it for 10 or 20 bucks instead of hundreds of dollars. 
Over here in the corner is where we have all of our guns, uh, foam cannons, all of our quick disconnects, uh, the Mosmatic fancy stuff. We have probably 10,000 of each of these on the shel in the shelves over here in the corner, uh, but we'll have the guys they'll pull from um, and tape. If you notice, you know, each one of these each one of these fittings is uh, is taped, and uh, and so uh, you know my mom will sit there with uh, with a bunch of people, and they'll sit there and, and tape up these these individual parts and pieces. We'll build little packages, little packs that go together depending on what pressure washer needs to be done. One of the things I'm learning now is that you know there are new fittings, there are new parts and pieces that um, you know we don't. Uh, it's not so easy to just turn around and change you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kits uh, and so you know for instance we need to be i want to put the new mosmatic fittings into our packages for krenzla but it's a it's a much much bigger process that's what we saw chris working on there in the garage or in the in the, the podcast studio so we take our foam cannons and we assemble them we put either a 1.1 millimeter orifice or a 1.25 millimeter orifice in um, the concept here in the beginning was to create these systems uh, or packages where people can buy and have you know a wand set up the way that I suggest. This was the old wand where we tape and torque, put the uh, put the fittings on. Again, this was the original wand. Now we have uh, new uh, OG spec wands which are come pre-assembled that are a little bit different. Uh, so we just continue to work on figuring out how to create solutions. Like for instance, this here is the entire Obsessed Garage uh, Mosmatic solution, uh, but we still have many people that buy the original because the, the the OG spec version it was quite a bit more expensive than the than the other. And so the key is figuring out you know, what are the progressive steps for for people and how do you put together a pressure washing package. All of our boxes are rather um, hard to get, um, but the boxes are strategically placed. Uh, when we move to the new, the new facility, we'll have quite a bit more flow in mind. You know, we want it to be as lean as possible. We're going to be, um, uh, we'll have, we, we already have a study set up where um, what are our A products, what are our B products, what are our C products, making those more accessible. Uh, but we're making pretty darn good use with, uh, this is 2,000 square feet minus the office, so about 1,700 square feet where we have, uh, you know, roughly a dozen people in here working all day, every day. Um, the way that the, the process works is uh, Ted, my dad, Andrew, they'll do the picking. And so we moved our list of table over here. Uh, and so this is where they'll stage and set up an order. Here's an order going to um, West Virginia, Alec. Uh, he bought some bead maker, a brake buster, and a tough shine tire brush. Uh, so Ted will walk around, he'll pull all the products, sit it here stage it. What we're going to be working toward in our new facility would be uh, conveyors uh, and, uh, and bins. Uh, so we'll be moving and transitioning to that. But what we do now is, you know, put the, put the, put the invoice and the product here. Uh, the other thing we'll be transitioning to as well as, uh, as, well as uh, having bins and having, um, having uh, our pick lists uh, will be uh, transitioning to barcode scanning. So that way when the packers package it, they'll have to scan each item to try to, try to reduce errors from a shipping you know, brake buster instead of bead maker and try to keep things as accurate as possible. This row has all of our apparel, uh, microfiber towels, power cords. Uh, this stuff just goes wherever we can fit it. Uh, we actually tripled our um, our storage, our, our, um, our cabin storage. We had, we had five storage units down the street that my dad and Ted were running to, you know, daily almost. Uh, now we have, um, we've, we've tripled our, our shelving capacity. So, uh, there's not a square inch in here that we're not using all the way up to the ceiling. We uh, assemble buckets, uh, so the guys will do, uh, we use slime, uh, and uh, so we put our, uh, our labels on and uh, create bucket packages for people all the time. Assembling hoses, uh, unassembled hoses go over here, um, but the, uh, this is what it looks like on a regular day uh, where we have you know, kind of stuff coming in. Uh, they have to stage orders going out over here. Uh, all of our you know, chemicals are here. We have hoses, Prevost fittings up top. Uh, and we've found that Swiss Tracks works great in keeping the facility clean. The problem is, is that the forklift, uh, and it's not so much the forklift, 
it's the pallets. The pallets come in broken. There's nails sticking out all the time, so we end up damaging it. I do need to uh, we you know once uh, to put edge pieces. You know, Swiss Tracks has been out of stock quite a bit here late as of late, um, so we're waiting on some edge pieces here to kind of finish this. But uh, again, we'll, we expect to be out of this facility shipping wise in around October. Uh, we're building the, the new facility. You can see Robert here's building some. Um, Building some lawns, just taping the, the end pieces. Uh, I forget how many steps it is. I think it's nine steps to assemble a wand. These are the original Mosmatics that, again, we sell, you know, sell quite a bit of, you know, several, several hundred, two, three, four hundred a month, something like that. This is our tool grid stuff here. Uh, so there's a lot in this little space. And what happens here, generally, all the flow is they pick Put the, put the stuff on the little shelf there, the packers package it, uh, and then we have some flex packers uh, where they'll, um, um, they'll, 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 that's where we use the room up front. Uh, and, then, um, and then Aaron here is, uh, his responsibility is dealing with where's my order, uh, order's missing. He's also scanning each item, weighing and scanning each item as it goes out. Uh, and so after the packers tape it and get it set up, uh, then he grabs the package takes the invoice, scans it, weighs it, uh, and so we're gonna continue to work on efficiency. You know, my goal here would be to be completely automated, have iPads at each workstation, but we've come a long way from where we started, which was uh, doing this all manually with regular tape, you know, really regular um, you know, box tape, uh, and the goal in our next facility would be to have a really specific workflow. Uh, so this door, I don't have powered, uh, I wish we did, um, but uh, I, you know, now at this point, it's, um, you know, we've kind of gotten accustomed to how this works. But the facility is air conditioned. Uh, we have a, a two ton or a one and a half ton and then a two and a half ton mini split. Uh, so a traditional that, that does the office and kind of vents into the building. We also have a really sophisticated um, dehumidification system. Uh, up top here is where, you know, extra boxes and bubble wrap and buckets. So that whole area is filled with uh, excess inventory as well. Uh, so they're up and down the stairs into the attic, you know, almost daily. You know, prior hose bibs, McGuire stuff, um, lots of grit guard stuff. Uh, we're waiting on a shipment of uh, hose reels uh, as we're about out of those. So the hose reels should be here. Um, and then again, we have a lot of, you know, Mossmatic stuff in the corner, posters, angel wax. Uh, we stock some you know, VX compressors and stuff like that here as well. There's some more Cox hose reels. So um, we really hadn't had time because of the spring to put this all together specifically. Uh, and now that we're moving to a new facility, it doesn't make sense to tear this apart and redo it. So there's a little bit of disjointedness on where some products are. Um, but uh, when we transition to the new facility, we have a very specific um, you know, barcoded system that, um, that we're going to be transitioning to. So let's take a walk next door and I'll show you that facility. So this is the other entry, uh, and as you can see, we're using every square inch of this place. This should be a entry area where I had full intention of putting a, an OLED on the wall and then having, you know, some, or apparel, but you know, we got too many humans in too little of a spot. We'll show you the parking lot after we're done here. Um, but Tommy and uh, Tommy's answering a lot of the tech support questions. And, um, and so these guys here are sitting here doing, um, um, you know, doing all of the, you know, Krenzel orders right now. I think that's what Jeff's working on is uh, uh, Krenzel orders, getting those products out to them. We use Google Sheets uh, that is communicated back and forth to Krenzla. Uh, the hope is that we get that automated on a system where we create a portal where all of our vendors can log into for drop shipping stuff. The long-term goal is to have a big enough facility where we don't have uh, to, to deal with any of this. So we just ship it all, control it from start to finish. Even though that's probably not the most financially efficient option, I would much prefer to be in total control from start to finish of each product. So these, uh, again, just like next door, these are uplift desks. Uh, we, I chose to do like the base black ones. These are the non-commercial versions, uh, but they function really well and they're easy to move around as we, we find ourselves moving these things around all the time. One of the things we're likely going to have to respond to, we were talking about this this morning, um, you know, we haven't had, 
we haven't had uh, virus issues here in, in Lake County, um, but it seems that it's headed our way. Uh, so we may have to go to masks and barriers. We do, you know, clean the facility quite a bit. We may have to go to different shifts and stuff like that. But I've, you know, taken it day by day trying to respond. Uh, in here, this is the same size office as next door, and this is where we have the media team. Uh, so tech support team is out there. Kyle, I will show you in a minute. He uses my desk quite a bit. Uh, but in here is where uh, Mike's working on some um, uh, product development, working on the new Cox hose reels, creating those. those. Michael is working on uh, color correcting and editing our desk tour video. Uh, and he has his uh, red camera sitting there. And so this is a pretty stout machine that they, they built in order to do some, uh, to handle that raw footage. Um, but he's using uh, DaVinci Resolve here to, to edit the videos. I don't do much editing anymore. Uh, and Bryce is kind of do, does, runs the team. He's holding the camera right now and works through everything. The, the, the end goal is that when we move to the new facility, media is going to stay here. Uh, tech support will go up there. The new building's uh, 5,000 square feet. It's about four miles, five miles from here. Uh, so media will stay here. All of our packaging, shipping, tech support, customer service will go there. And this will become just a big design and, uh, and studio for shooting videos. We'll have an unboxing studio, a podcast area, and all of that. So I'll, I'll maintain this facility. Then all of my product testing, all of my videoing, all the cool stuff that was on the other side. Last time you saw a video of a tour of the facility is now here. So I transplanted the hose reels, the lift, transplanted the the cabinet array over onto this side. We also transplanted, uh, Mike came down, and uh, my friend Mike Figuera came down, and we did a whole new install, putting the new prior you know, P114 hose bib in and a bucket filler. And so this is a fully functioning, uh, you know, sort of little testing grounds for the K1322. A cabinet in the corner has all microfiber towels and stuff like that. Um, we have the new Fiat compressor, which I'm still working on, finalizing, um, finalizing how to put a dryer. You notice know, so I've got a hockey puck in there. I told you, uh, this is what it looks like uh, on an average uh, Wednesday, and I've been polishing my car, so I have the, one of the airlines running where I blow out pads out the door. But um, I do need to set up and fix uh, our, this is a desiccant or a um, oil water separator uh, that will accept, so I'm going to run some tubing in order to accept all the you know, water from, the, uh, from this that really isn't all that prevalent because this is dehumidified. Got some bike tires sitting here, some tester uh, vacuum cleaners, and then of course, you know, the Mil Milwaukee mess. I've actually gotten through quite a bit of it um, and that uh, there's a bunch on the shelves. I've sold a bunch of it, uh, so working through one product category at a time. Uh, this here is a twin bush lift, which I'm going to be transitioning away from. Had major difficulties with stock and inventory and me having to pay for them up front and then, you know, them sending me tariff bills and stuff like that, so I'm done with them. Uh, we're going to be moving on to, um, to doing noose bomb lifts, so I'll be swapping this out here soon. Uh, and then the cabinet array, this is a Sonic MSS, uh, and you can see this is what it looks like on an average day uh, where I'm polishing on the car, trying to fix some, some of the issues I had with, uh, with Gian Can Coat. I just put a new bumper on, uh, so I'm dealing with product development, product, figuring out product, uh, as well as wanting, having an incessant desire, an overwhelming desire to keep things organized. It drives me crazy. Um, but uh, I was polishing on the car yesterday. We're going to do a live stream here later today. Uh, but I've been working on developing and figuring out what Milwaukee tools do I want in my own cabinet uh, and then by proxy uh, get you know get you this the same option to be able to choose that again Swiss tracks flooring in here works really well at keeping the facility clean I don't think we've vacuumed this since I moved in other than a few little spot vacuums um, but the facility always looks clean because of that uh, one of the concepts I had when I built the other side was I wanted to have hose reels and power cord reels on all four corners of the car so that way when I'm polishing I have access to power I have access to air and then the air is delivered via Prevost piping throughout the whole facility uh, this side of the building has 19 of my four bulb fixtures the other side has 19 of the six bulb fixtures this side is 40 by 40 the other side is 50 by 40 so this is 1600 square feet 
Uh, I also, when Chris kicked me out of my office, I had this concept that I would build a new office. Well, apparently, I've gotten kicked out of my new office, which is now Kyle's office. Uh, so Kyle's working on uh, designing some garages, putting cabinets together. Uh, by the addition of adding Tommy to the tech support team, we freed up Kyle more to answer these you know, more sophisticated questions of what cabinets should I do, what lifts should I do, what hose reels should I get. Uh, and so this desk here, we'll have a desk tour video here coming up shortly, but this is a custom uh, top on an uplift frame with that I incorporated into a Sonic MSS Plus cabinet array. Uh, so this was uh, a way for us to kind of test out and see the, the MSS stuff. Uh, and, uh, and then put the OG logo in the corner here. I plan to put some acoustic treatments, but again, this whole facility is likely going to change. We're going to be putting Hunter mounting balance. We're going to be putting a Revolution uh, tire mounting balance or mounting system and a Road Force balancer. Uh, or again, we're going to be creating a dedicated unboxing studio, and uh, it's going to become a pretty awesome facility for that. Ted's forced to come over here. We have all of our posters. Um, we have all of the Milwaukee stuff as I build out what we're stocking and what products we're going to be choosing to sell. For instance, this is a you know quarter inch hex impact driver. The 2553-22 is something we'll be stocking in the store, and so that's you know available online. So what you see in the media room is Bryce and Mike. They'll come out here and have to photograph it, create the product, write the description. Of course, Kyle and his team have to support that by answering people's questions, uh, and then my job is to you know, sell it, to talk about it, to teach you about it. So we have overflow storage here. Um, and for a while, a long time, I had all my car parts on top of the cabinets. Well, now it's filled with Milwaukee. But this, for now, is our bottling area. Uh, and so we have this pumping station that an OG follower made for us. That's the OG tire dressing. That back there is uh, Meguiar's um, uh, all-purpose cleaner. That's the thing where we'll mix up hyper dressing and dilute it. Um, we need to order some, but uh, we just bottled all of our um, all of our um, soap. I can't wait to get this out of this building and into a proper area where we've got people that are working tightly inside of this little spot. Um, we have uh, CarPro bottles. That's the bottles that I buy. They let us uh, put the, uh, the decon soap in that in that bottle, and then you know, of course we've been you know bottling our tire dressing and some temporary stuff. Um, but the guys will come over here and work with the pump in order to bottle the the stuff. So we just got a new tote of tire dressing. It cost me about uh, it was about forty five hundred dollars is the cost of the tote, uh, and then you know that that tote will make. You know, we'll sell retail, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars worth of worth of um, um, profitability in there. But of course, I've got to pay the founder of the product, and so you know, we we maintain a you know reasonable margin on it. But the goal long term would be to bottle everything in a superior bottle, and so I would hope to be able to buy Meguiar's in quantity and CarPro in quantity in these totes and be be doing our own bottling. So this is our sort of testing ground and figuring that out. Uh, so the, the general concept here is that we have a lot of people in a tiny little building tripping over each other. I doubt we'll ever have culture like this again. I really don't want to split up the facility, but I think we're going to have to. Uh, we don't have a choice. Uh, I'll show you the parking lot here in a minute. So this building, again, it's a 3,600 square foot building. It's 40 by 90. I leased the building from the owner. I mean, we've talked about me purchasing it, but it just makes more sense to lease this, uh, being as clearly we're spilling out of the seams. You can see the parking lot. We're parked in the fire lane. Sometimes have to park in a handicapped spot. Um, these trucks have to back in here and navigate all of these cars, uh, but the, the the idea here is to stay lean and then someday build a much bigger facility, uh, buy several hundred acres. I have a realtor looking for you know, 250-ish acres that we can zone as mixed use uh, somewhere in this area. My house is about a mile from here. Uh, so the, the, uh, the idea here is to take this building, make it uh, the Obsessed Garage design and media where we're able to display all the products, host uh, you know, an event or two a year, um, but do all of our video shooting and really have a place for me to park my cars because I haven't built a garage in my house yet. Uh, but one of the problems we're running into is space and having cars. We have cars parked out the side of the building. 
Uh, but the new, the new facility, again, will be taking and moving all of our packaging, all of our shipping, all of our distribution will go to a, it's a 50 by 100 building with another 1,200, cover, 1200 square foot covered area where we'll have much better flow where the product will come in, work its way from front to back. So assembly tech support will sit in there working very closely with the product uh, and, uh, and being you know, hands-on so they can really learn it. That'll be the proving grounds. Uh, and then uh, having, you know, having the product, the goal would be to stock and ship everything we sell, providing an end-to-end -end solution for the garage. That's what I'm super interested in being able to provide. And doing all of this just affords me the ability to make these videos and, and uh, test products and try things out. So anyway, that's the uh, OGHQ as it currently sits. I wanted to get a tour on it because it's going to change drastically over the next six months or so. Uh, and so I wanted to uh, capture this moment in time, an average Wednesday morning, uh, and hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll continue to do what it's doing, and I, hopefully I can keep uh, making videos like this. So thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, taking the tour with me. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. This, uh, this idea or this concept I think is, uh, has some real legs. I'm going to keep chasing as long as you'll allow me. So I'll catch you on the next one.